The more you know about the way the world's laid out, the better you'll be able to know where the subject of your research can be found in nature. I used to spend hours just looking at maps. No one asked me to. I just enjoyed looking at maps. Reading and understanding a map is an important language function. Now, if you have experience with maps in your first language, you'll be able to find your way on a map in English. There are so many graphic clues. Now, this map shows the range of the gray fox. When I visited the ancient Mayan ruins at Tikal, I saw gray foxes lounging around on the ruins. Can you identify some of the countries that are in its range? Look at the parts of the map in red. Episode 51 goes into detail about range and distribution. A topic that's often confused with range is an animal's habitat. Now, thinking of that gray fox and the map you just saw, ask yourself, what kinds of habitats within that range would supply the needs of a gray fox? Now, that could be very challenging since this range covers everything from mountains to swamps, deserts to coastlines. The gray fox has the same habitat needs as all animals. It needs food and water, shelter to escape bad weather and raise young and avoid predators, and enough space to meet those needs. Now, the range of an animal can sometimes tell us about the habitat it needs. Notice that all those details have to do with woody growth. So that's the kind of area where the gray fox meets most of its needs. Most animals need a certain habitat in order to survive. A river otter can't survive in a streamless desert. A humpback whale can't live on a mountaintop. And an alligator can't survive in the Arctic. These habitats all fail to support the animal I just paired with them. To learn more about the complexities of habitat, let's watch this video about the habitat needs of a bird called the tufted puffin. A look at tufted puffins and the places where they live illustrates the importance of habitat. This puffin shares a rocky ledge with muirs, a bird that shares this habitat with puffins. Both species need this rocky environment to protect their eggs and their chicks against predators. It's basic knowledge that a habitat is where an animal gets four universal needs met. Food, of course, as well as water, shelter, and space. Now, seeing this avian life in these surroundings, you can discover some of the complexities of habitat. While both kinds of birds are found near water, they need time ashore for even the mundane tasks of drying their feathers and preening. Being near fish-bearing water is also essential to tufted puffins. Now on this one we see the blonde tufts curled back to attract the mates. The tufts are part of the mating plumage and the namesake of the tufted puffins. These birds of the water need the rocky cliffs, the solid ground, where they can lay their eggs and keep them warm and protected, while their mate brings them food back from the nearby water. Their massive bills can carry several small fish at a time to feed their nesting mate and later their chicks. So the rocky shore is vital to the tufted puffin but so is the nearby water. Puffins are coastal birds. See how the water and the rocky shore function together, how the puffin needs both for its habitat. Here it leaves the water to enter a sheltering hole in the rocks. After being sheltered ashore as an egg and as a chick, this immature puffin finds its comfort zone in the water. Now as it matures, the puffin will spend most of its time in the water, but its habitat needs are not all met in the sea. These puffins swim in much calmer water than they would in nature. They're living at the Oregon Coast Aquarium in Newport, Oregon. 
listen to the reaction of the aquarium visitors, including a toddler watching the puffin swim. While the aquarium hasn't brought back the waves, they had to take into account all the habitat needs of the tufted puffins. The water is supplied in abundance, food is injected into the environment, and enough space is provided for healthy life. The rocky cliffs provide shelter, helped no doubt by the huge overhead net to keep predators out. Another way the aquarium mimics nature is the inclusion of other coastal species, often seen in the wild with puffins. You're watching Ramping Up Your English, and we're reviewing our project of researching an animal of your choosing and writing a report on it. This is segment two of episode 75. We're focusing the report you're writing on your animal of your choice, and episodes 51 and 52 are both about reporting on an animal's habitat. You'll find them along with episodes, well, all of them, of Ramping Up Your English at my website, letscreate.org. Once you're there, go to the Animal Unit and navigate to episode 51 and 52.